This video looks at the genetic explanation of schizophrenia, which is also known as a biological explanation. Have a look at this graph. This graph shows what risk of developing schizophrenia you have based on whether somebody in your family has it as well. So if you have a look, 1% of the general population suffer from schizophrenia. If your parent, for example, has schizophrenia, you have a 6% chance or a risk of developing schizophrenia. Now, if you go from parent down, remembering how much of your DNA you share with a parent, as you go down here, you have a much higher increase chance of developing schizophrenia depending on that person's relationship to you. So, for example, when we start going on to identical twins who share 100% of DNA with their identical twin, the rate of getting schizophrenia jumps to 48%. Now, what's really interesting is this 48% suggests that there must be a genetic component to schizophrenia because they share 100% of DNA. However, if schizophrenia was 100% genetic in its origin, then this figure here would be 100% because if they've shared 100% of their DNA, if one uh, twin gets schizophrenia, the other should as well. Again, just having a look at this in a different way of figures, if your parent has schizophrenia, that gives you a 1 in 10 chance of, de of developing schizophrenia yourself. But once we start looking at identical twins, it jumps to 1 in 2. And non-identical twins as well, who have di different genetic makeup, go to 1 in 8. So what are we talking about when we're talking about genes? Genes are made up of DNA, and humans have around 20, 25,000 genes. You inherit one copy of each gene from every parent. Genes determine all of your physical features, but they also determine psychological traits as well. If you wanted to test the theory that schizophrenia was a genetic disorder, how would you go about designing this? Think about that. Think about twin studies. Think about adoption studies. Think about all the methodology that you've learned so far. When finding out if schizophrenia is genetic, we're looking for a gene or genes that are responsible for schizophrenia that can be passed from parents to children. This is the idea that schizophrenia can run in families. Now, the lifetime risk of schizophrenia is 1%. That's across the population. So anything higher than this indicates the role of genes. As we just discussed, if your parents have it, or if your brother and sister have it, then your chance of developing it increases. Now, Claridge and Davis argue that the contribution of genetic factors is one of the few factual certainties about schizophrenia. A really interesting study to have a little bit more of a look at if you're interested in this is by Rosenthal in 1963. Now, Rosenthal managed to find a case of a four sisters, they were quadruplets, who all developed schizophrenia. Now, the chance of this happening is absolutely minuscule, and this is a really, really strong argument here for the fact that schizophrenia has a genetic basis. However, it can't be ignored that all of the girls had a terrible upbringing. Their father and mother showed clear signs of instability. Their childhood was disrupted due to the inability of the parents to properly care for the children. Now, this suggests a number of factors which make a cause and effect relationship really difficult to conclude here. If the girls all suffered a terrible upbringing and all four of them were experiencing the same environment, then it actually shows that it's just as likely that there was something within that environment that caused them all to get schizophrenia rather than just a genetic basis. Twin studies are often used to have a look at the relationship in uh, genetics with schizophrenia, and some of the most striking evidence comes from looking at MZ and DZ twins. If you need to revise what twin studies are, there's a different video on that within the biological section of this, so please go and have a look at what concordance rate means and M. Some of the strongest evidence from twin studies comes from Gottman in 1991. Now, she found that concordance rate between monozygotic twins for having schizophrenia was 48%, but only 17% for diazygotic twins. This suggests a really strong genetic component for schizophrenia. However, it's also worth remembering that MZ twins share 100% of their DNA, but the concordance rate is only 48%. This suggests that 52% must be down to something else, potentially the environment. You also need to remember that both MZ and DZ twins in most cases share the exact same environment. So the fact that both of them development, have developed the disorder, you can argue is genetic, but you could also argue it's because they both experienced the same event or same stressful event within their life, or they both lived in a low socioeconomic area or anything like that. So it's very difficult to draw cause and effect conclusions from this. Claridge and Davis, more recently in 2003, reviewed twin studies in schizophrenia, and they reported concordance rates for MZ twins ranging from 0 to 90%.
Generally, the concordance for MZ twins seem to be around 50%, so a little bit stronger than Gottsman, but still 50% unaccounted for. This suggests then as a rule of thumb that if one MZ twin has schizophrenia, there's a 50-50 chance that the other twin will develop the disorder as well. Gottsman and Shields then in 1982 looked at the hereditability of schizophrenia and found that it varied upon the severity of symptoms. In the more severe cases of schizophrenia, the concordance rate was much higher, meaning that you were more likely to develop schizophrenia if your identical twin had a very severe case of schizophrenia. While twin studies give psychologists the opportunity to investigate the genetic basis of behaviour, they do have a number of weaknesses. Adoption studies are also used because if an adopted child has a high concordance rate with their birth family as opposed to their adopted family, then this allows us to see a clear genetic basis as well. Whereas if they have more in common with their adopted family, then this suggests a much stronger role for the environment. Research from adoption studies comes from Tianori et al. in 2000, who studied 164 adoptees whose biological mothers had been diagnosed with schizophrenia. Now, they found that 11 of these also received a diagnosis of schizophrenia. Now, if you remember the first slide I showed you, this is about what we would expect. But it's also worth remembering that that evidence there supports that there must be a genetic basis for schizophrenia. Equally, 2% of the control adoptees, which were born to non-schizophrenic mothers, were also diagnosed as schizophrenic. So again, if we're saying 1%, that's about right, 1 in every 100, 2 in every 200. That's about what we were agreeing with at the beginning. An additional finding can also be that children are at a higher genetic risk tend to do well if their adopted family provide a supporting environment. Better, in fact, than the ones who did not have a genetic risk but were brought up in poor environments. This suggests a really strong role for the environment because it means that even genetically predisposed children who are more likely to get schizophrenia, the risk can go away if they've been given a stable upbringing. Epigenetics is another area that you need to consider when looking at the genetic explanation of schizophrenia. If schizophrenia was completely genetic, we would have a 100% concordance rate, and epigenetics plays a role in explaining this. Now, the expression of genes or the activation or repression can be affected by the environment. Think about illness, environmental pollution, life stress, for example, and this would cause the expression of genes to change, explaining the concordance. The best way to explain this Imagine each twin inherits an identical keyboard. Through life, some of the keys are pressed and some of them are removed. So each twin was given an identical keyboard, but the text that they produce will be entirely different. Epigenetics is the idea that each twin inherits the same genomes, but the environment will affect each twin differently and therefore affects which genes are activated or which genes are repressed. This is why one twin may develop schizophrenia and the other one doesn't, even though their genes are identical. So again, we're agreeing that schizophrenic may, schizophrenia may have a genetic basis and both twins may have the gene, but it may be the life experiences that trigger whether those genes are activated or not. The C4 gene. This is one of the most recent things that have come out of uh, research into the genetic basis of schizophrenia. And this allows us to pinpoint the exact gene that is responsible. Now, schizophrenia seems to involve several genes rather than just one, but a recent study has narrowed down this research to the C4 gene. Sekou et al. analyzed 100,000 human DNA samples from 30 different countries, and they identified a gene called the complement component 4, aka C4, which is part of the immune system. Now, genetic analysis of 65,000 people found that those who had particular forms of the C4 gene showed a higher risk of developing schizophrenia. The human brain normally undergoes synaptic pruning during an adolescence. Now, this is a good thing because it allows for the brain to prune, so get rid of underused or damaged connections and therefore make space for new ones. It's the kind of use it or lose it idea going on in the brain. C4 plays a role in pruning synapses, but excessive pruning could lead to the symptoms seen in schizophrenia. Test mice with increased levels of C4 activity lost more brain cells as they mature. Now, what's really interesting here is this would explain how schizophrenic symptoms appear after adolescent and why the brains of people with schizophrenia have a thinner cerebral cortex with fewer synapses than healthy brains. To evaluate the genetic explanation of schizophrenia, there is lots of evidence that schizophrenia is at least partly genetic, but it cannot be the only explanation as we've discussed the whole way through. 
Much of the research is based on heritability studies, non-environmental, so cause and effect relationships cannot be drawn. As we discussed with the twin studies, the twins share 100% of the environment, so it's really difficult to work out whether the twins have developed schizophrenia due to the genes or due to the environment that they share. Many studies have small sample sizes. We've already talked about the use of PET scans and post-mortem scans, which make it even harder to draw cause and, co cause and effect conclusions. Much of the research has been based in the West, therefore we can say it's culturally biased and ethnocentric. This makes it really difficult to apply to explanations of schizophrenia across the continent. Genetic explanations are also really reductionist. They ignore social and cultural factors, as we discussed earlier on in the video about adoption studies and that role that the environment and upbringing has to play on whether schizophrenia is developed. It's also really deterministic. The idea that you're born with a gene that means that you're going to inherit a disorder or not at a certain point in your life is really deterministic. It suggests that it's nothing to do with free will or choices that you make in your life. Now, this may be true in the case of schizophrenia, but by ignoring other factors, it means that we don't get a holistic approach to schizophrenia. It's also very nomothetic, ignoring the different ways that people experience schizophrenia and the different types of schizophrenia. Many psychologists still believe to this day that schizophrenia doesn't even exist as a single illness. 